The PARA method is a widely recognized organization system frequently explored by users of personal knowledge management tools. This method is simple and can be integrated into any PKM system. While some systems may enhance its intuitiveness, others might introduce challenges, particularly if used as the sole organizational method. Today, I'd like to share how we can implement the PARA method in Affine Pro, which I believe is a relatively simple and intuitive process. Let's get started. The PARA method is a productivity and organization system created by Tiago Forte. It stands for Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archives. The method is designed to help you organize your digital life and manage your tasks and information more effectively. The breakdown of each component are Project These are short-term efforts with a clear goal and a deadline. Projects are tasks or series of tasks that you are actively working on and need to complete within a specific time frame. Areas these are long-term responsibilities and activities that you want to maintain over time. Areas don't have a specific end date, but are ongoing commitments such as health, finances, or professional development. Resources. These are topics or themes of ongoing interest. Resources are collections of information that you might want to refer to in the future, but are not currently active projects or areas. Examples include reference materials, research, or learning materials. Archives. These are items that are no longer active, but you want to keep for the future reference. Archives include completed project, past resources, and any other information that you might need to look back on someday. In a find, a collection is a smart folder that groups documents based on search qualities. These qualities can use both AND and OR filter criteria. This collection feature, combined with conventional tags, facilitates the intuitive and straightforward implementation of the PARA method on a fine platform. The purpose of setting up or using the PARA method is to improve overall workflow. Therefore, I do not want to create anything overly complicated to set up or maintain as that would reduce efficiency. Specific objectives to achieve when PARA is set up. Each category must be instantly accessible. Any archive documents must appear in the archive and not in the other collection. Creating a new item in each category should be intuitive and simple. Optionally, multi-category coexistence support is helpful. And therefore, today's implementation, I will assume that it is a requirement. Now let's look at how to make PARA in a fine. The first step is to create four tags that represent each category in PARA. For this, you can go to Navigate to All Docs, select Tag, click on Create New Tag. Create the following tags, Project, Area, Resource, and Archive. Next, we will create the archive collection. Navigate to the Collections section. Go to the Collections section in the main menu. Click on the plus button, name it Archive, and hit Save. Click on Add Rules to set up search criteria for this collection. Click on Add Filter, select Tags, choose Contains One Of, and select the Archive tag. Hit Save. Now you've created Archive Collection. This collection will list any document that has an Archive tag, regardless of any other tag it has. Although the creation process for Project, Area, and Resource Corrections is essentially the same, the current version of Affine does not support sorting collections. Therefore, to achieve the desired para order from top to bottom, you must create the corrections in reverse order. So let's start with resource correction. Go to the collections section in the left main menu. 
click on the plus button and name it resource. Click on add rules. First, add the filter for any document with resource tag. By selecting tags, choose contain one of and select the resource tag. Next, add a second filter to exclude documents tagging with archive. Click on add filter again, select tags, choose does not contain one of and select the archive tag. Hit save. This collection will include all documents that have the resource tag except those that also have the archive tag. If a document has archive tag, it will be excluded from this collection, even if it also has the resource tag. Repeat the same steps as creating resource for area, then lastly project. You are set for a para setup. You can optionally add these four para corrections to your favorites. The benefit of doing this is that it allows you to manually order your favorites in any way you prefer. Even if you did not create the collections in para order or added other collections afterward, you can still keep para at the top. To do this, simply select the desired collection and click on favorites. Let's now move on to actually using it. First, create a document using the new doc button. Tag the document with proper para category tag. You can assign multiple para categories to a single document, such as project and resource. This will make the document appear in both collections, except for archive tag. When you add the archive tag, the document will no longer appear in any of the other three para collections. If you want to ensure that the document exists in only one of the four collections, just make sure to delete the other para category tags when changing between the collections. While you can create a new document directly under a collection using the plus button on the main menu, a powerful and convenient feature, I would advise against using this method with a para setup. The reason is that creating documents this way bypasses all rules. Consequently, even if you tag the document with archive, it will not disappear from the other collections. If you find this method of adding new documents to each collection more intuitive, you can certainly use it. However, removing from the collection involves more steps with this approach. To remove the document from the collection with this approach, where the doc is created this way, select the document within the collection, choose Remove Special Filter option. Additionally, ensure that you tag the document before removing it. This step is crucial to prevent the document from disappearing completely from the power list. Working with actual project in Affine feels more intuitive than in other PKMS I've used. The main reason for this is the ability to create multiple notes within a single document when using edgeless mode. This feature allows me to treat one document in Affine as an entire project folder containing multiple notes, media files, and other resources. This is one of the main reasons I currently prefer using Affine over other PKMS I've used. While the current system works well, I'm not convinced it is perfect. So here are my wish list on Affine in the future to improve para method organization supporting. Transclusion. When working on a project with an infinite canvas like Affine, the ideal workflow involves consolidating all relevant nodes and files in a single location to view all at once. This allows for side-by-side -side comparisons, combining nodes, and better organization. Currently, Affine does not support viewing the content of a linked document, a feature known as transclusion. This functionality is planned for a future update and is expected to significantly enhance the workflow. When this feature is released, you will be able to include relevant resource documents directly into the canvas as one of many nodes. Until then, the workaround for using multiple documents is to open two instances of Affine and use them as a split view. This way, you can have the project document open in one instant and the resource document in the other. 
The ability to create an infinite number of nodes within a single document and combine selected ones to form a comprehensive long-form page is a powerful feature in Affine. However, the full concept of a node entity is currently limited to edgeless mode. In edgeless mode, I can choose which nodes to display and in what specific order they appear in page mode. On the other hand, in page mode, I have to refer to the right panel's table of contents to identify node groups, and I cannot change their order. If a fine can enhance the seamless integration of nodes and other blocks in page mode, the overall workflow for long-form writing with a fine would improve significantly. While it won't break the system, I wonder if using tags to classify the para category is truly the best approach. This is because many, if not all, documents will end up with one of the four para tags. If these tags are so prevalent, should they really be tags? How would I know if I forgot to add a para tag? While I can easily create a collection to identify documents without the para tag, is it worth creating such collection? What if we had better property support? Specifically, what if we had properties that allow us to create a fixed list of values that the property can take, whether it's a single choice or multiple choices? In that case, I could create a paracategory property field. Then collections could be created based on that property rather than tags, making it distinctly separate from tags. Currently, we don't have such a property type, nor is property part of the correction search quality criteria. I'm fairly confident these features will be supported in some point. Once we do, it might be worth coming back to making para in a fine using property and compare if that works better or worse than tag. I have recently started using the para method, and although I haven't fully committed to it yet, I find that setting up para organization affine is quite intuitive. Its use is both easy and practical in appropriate setting. While para method alone may not provide the most intuitive organization of the entire document within the affine, I think it's certainly doable and worth giving a try for anyone interested. If anyone has a better approach to implementing para in affine, please share in the comments. Thanks for watching.